everyone, this is Erin Ashley Simon. You're watching Launching Point, a show about people within gaming who turn a hobby into a career beyond the controller. Today, I'm joined by Zach TTG and Chris London. Guys, what's your launching point? Zach, Chris, this is a question I always have to ask everyone. What's your launching point? You know, started as a basketball player, played Division One overseas, came into some injuries that stopped me from playing basketball. And that's where I found YouTube and uh, creating content. Uh, started in my dorm room in college and met this guy playing video games and we formulated a business and a successful group and YouTube channel together along with our personal channels and uh, here we are. My launching point was a small country town in Ohio. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, outside of that, like um, just playing video games coming up as a kid, I didn't really have much to do. I was an only child, had to entertain myself, got into college, played basketball. Um, actually, we kind of have a similar story too. I got an injury into my basketball career, um, went through some like some dark stuff for a time because I thought like basketball was like my whole world and like my only chance to do anything with myself. Then I got into electrical engineering and went that path um, and started using my brain. Started playing video games while I was on the road. That turned into streaming while I was on the road and then meeting him and then from what he said until now. We know a little bit of you both, obviously because you're influencers, you're part of a recognizable org, and you're just pretty much out there in so many different shapes and forms. But do we really know you, per se? I'm the same way online as I am offline. I like to have fun. I like to mess with people. I like to also make sure that work is getting done. And we pretty much took what we were good at and what we are and turned that into something that we were able to monetize, basically. So I feel like who I am as a person really shows through my videos. I'm definitely more amped up on camera, I would say. I think off camera, I'm very lax and reserved. Like he was saying, I kind of show myself through just the content that I like to put out, like what I enjoy just making and creating every day, always on the job, on the clock. But to me, it's not like I'm on the clock, right? Yeah. So I'm just having fun with it. I feel like you guys are a little more introverted. I mean, I'm, I'm introverted as yeah. well. And so how do you balance that because I know for myself, I love talking to fans, I love talking to everyone, but I also sometimes don't want to talk to anyone and I sometimes don't want to do content. I sometimes don't want to be in front of the camera. Yeah. Is that something that you two ever struggle with and, and how do you overcome those feelings? There's times when like, people don't want to wake up and go to their job, they, this is my job. So even if I'm having a bad day, if we got to shoot that day, you gotta put a smile on, you gotta turn it on, you gotta be entertaining. Like not having a good day and having to still go to work, you gotta do it. Like it's just, it's it's what I do, it's who I am. If you're somebody that builds patios, you wanna build the best patio every time. I'm somebody that makes videos, I wanna make the best video every time. As far as like being introverted off the camera and things like that, I mean, yeah, I'm, I like talking to people to a certain extent, but I'm I'm more about like connecting with someone. I like to get to know people more than just have surface level conversations. What I found is like the balance too of like personal life, work life, because I think as influencers online, we can kind of get lost in like, where do we stop? And I, I kind of learned that the hard way, you know, sometimes I would overdo it, you know, find myself in the hospital just because like I was just on go uploading every day all these things and just even on weekends and I learned like I just like to take the weekends to myself now especially as I get older more mature you know I'm married have a wife and things like that so those are things I'm learning to like balance and do better with when you try to connect with that audience provide that entertainment do your job like yeah. You gotta just have to say like, no, this is, it's okay to like take some days off to yourself. So how do you navigate that in terms of developing a connection, knowing who to connect with, knowing who to grow with, to network, like, while also knowing that there are people who know who you are. Mm -hmm. And also there are some people who may want something from you. You learn the hard way <laughs> about that and about people like just, just trying to get to know you because they want something from you. But I mean, as you navigate through 
life and as you get older and more wise, you can kind of like, you can see that, yeah. you can pick that up quicker. Being able to connect like that is just about being yourself because they can look you up online, like you said, you can just Google me and find out all this stuff about me. But if you're just yourself all the time, I think that's the most important thing because like you get what you see. Like Zach was saying, just being yourself and what, who comes from it, what people may take from it, that's on them. Because yeah. like, I think trying to worry about, you know, catering to somebody else, it's just gonna add stress to your life. Maybe change yourself when you're not even wanting to do that, when you're just trying to be the best version of yourself. And I think just, not even caring about what people think is the best way to go about it. So I kind of laughed when you said, yeah, I started using my brain. You use your brain when you're athletes. Yeah, you use it's your brain, but it's like, manner. yeah, exactly. It's more like, yeah, it's a different side of the brain. It's like, I mean, yeah, I'll, you use your brain when you're playing games, you use your brain when you're playing basketball, but some people don't think they're as intelligent as what they are. So they think they can only go into one line of work and they can't do something else. Or somebody has told them like, you can't be this, you can't be that. I heard a lot of stuff. I was the only black kid in my town. You know, I mean, I've heard everything. Like nobody thought I was gonna be anything. The parents wouldn't let like some of the girls date me because I was the black kid that wasn't gonna do anything, but end up in jail or like end up with, you know, a bad job or like a low paying job or something like that because I grew up like really poor. Um, was fortunate enough to get game systems and things like that uh, when I could, not when they came out, but when I could. And just seeing where I came from there to where I'm at now and the people I've met and like, I didn't do it by myself. Nobody does it by themselves. I didn't do it by myself. I wouldn't be in the same spot if I didn't meet him. It's a full circle yeah. moment, you know? I always tell people that sometimes we have to go through immense hardships to get to success or yeah. the pinnacle of where we want to go. And you you mentioned you had injuries that you dealt with and other obstacles. Mm -hmm. And then Chris, you actually have, basically you're like mini documentary on YouTube that talks about like just the, the trials and tribulations that you went through with your health yeah. in terms of the regular heartbeat that you had and the problems with that. Yeah, a lot of procedures, a lot of doctor visits. You know, it's just one of those things where I felt like you know, doctors and coaches kind of put a limitation on me and my mindset, and I needed to break free from that. So I just kind of took it to the chin when I lost my scholarship. You know, I took a semester to just focus on, you know, school and finish it out. Uh, but as I was doing that, you know, that's where I found YouTube and I was studying marketing. And then in the classroom, it was like the stuff they were teaching me, I was like already doing, but at a higher degree. And then I kind of started to think, okay, well, I could keep paying for school and asking my parents for money to help pay for it, or I could just take a risk and prove to everybody that not only am I more than just an athlete, I, I can be like an entertainer. Like that's what I wanted to be. The first 100K, like my goal was to like earn 100,000 subscribers without even making a basketball video. Like I just wanted to prove that point to people and I did that. You know, when one door closes, there's always gonna be another one that opens and you just gotta go walk through it. You know, in your two's experience being athletes, mm -hmm. what were some of the key takeaways that you feel like has made you successful as business people? Obviously discipline above anything else. Learning how to be around people that you don't always wanna be around or like having to like, like go outside of our group and work with people that we don't know or like like sports really taught me to live my life for me even though basketball is a team sport you got to do your part and if you're not having a good time doing it it's it's hard to do it you know you will have to sacrifice a lot that you don't want to to be great right i think where i excelled in in the sport of basketball was the times that i sacrificed going out to party or things like that. I didn't ever party. I was just in the gym getting shots up. It's the same thing. Like I would sacrifice going out partying to edit and, you know, film a video like, oh, I could, you know, go to this cool party, but like we have a shoot that I have to do or I'm behind on a scheduled uploads. Like those are the type of things that sports kind of like taught me to be great in whatever it is that you do. For me, being able to work with the team and finding people that compliment you was 
what I took from sports and brought into my business ventures. Even with the teamwork, there are times when, let's be honest, there's times when things don't go well, right? Mm. There's times where you may argue or not agree. Mm -hmm. What kind of method or what advice would you give towards those who may be in a team environment? It's just the conversation. You just have to be transparent with one another and exactly. not leave any kind of like open-ended things or discussions. Like you just lay it all out in, in, the, mo in the moment, yeah. right? Rather than letting something linger at the end of the day if you're honest about everything nobody can really hold anything against you like let's say you go to a shoot and they're like oh you know what can you do and you're like oh i can do a backflip but you can't really do a backflip then they get to the scene and it's like all right let's have her do a backflip and you're like i don't know how to do a backflip yeah. <laughs> you set yourself up for that situation by not being honest so just being honest um being transparent like he said communication is huge um, but that, yeah, that would probably be my, my biggest things. I hope the viewers, I hope you all were listening to a lot of things that they were saying because they dropped some great gems. Obviously, sacrifice and being a good team player, communication, and sometimes taking a step back and not taking things personally yeah. and actively listening. So those were some of the important tips that you gave throughout this entire program. But for those who want to be in your position, mm -hmm. what is one actionable tip that you would give them? Something that I would probably take and I should listen to myself is just um, act now rather than, you know, saying, oh, I'm gonna start, you know, next week or things like that. Cause I think that's a, a something I struggle with is like, I'll have like a plan and I'll be like, all right, I'm gonna start on Monday or I'll start on the first of the month. No, just like literally go do it, something right now. Thank you to my guests for sitting down with me today. And also thanks to all the viewers for watching Launching Point. Drop in the comments section, what's your launching point? Until next time, I'm Erin Ashley Simon. This episode of Launching Point is brought to you by Dorito Solid Black. Dorito Solid Black is about bolstering the voices of black change makers. Shout out to Doritos.